so this is going to be my review of Legend of the Blue Marvel. Now, this comic was written by uh, Kevin Greverix, who most of you guys would know as the writer and producer of the Underworld movies, and soon to be the I, Frankenstein movie. Now, uh, Legend of the Blue Marvel tells the story of this uh, super um, the first black superhero that came in the Marvel 60s universe, it, it, during the 1960s of the Marvel u universe. And it's not... It's a really good comic. I actually really do enjoy it. It really plays up something that you don't really see a lot in a lot of the modern-day Marvel comics, uh, racism. And this guy, Blue Marvel, got such a shit deal. I mean, he was very educated. He had all the right schools. He was a football player. He's a scientist, and he was a soldier in Vietnam. And when he, when the world found out that he was black, uh, everyone just decided, you know, give him a shit deal. And, and also... They do, I'm gonna say this right now, they drop the N-word everywhere. And there are some words in here for, you know, there are some racial slurs in here that I thought were extinct. <laughs> there are a few of them where I was like, wow, you know, way to keep up with the times, Kevin. Uh, I, well, obviously, some of the stuff is set in the 60s, so uh, there was that. Now, the thing, the main problem I have with this is that this comic gets um, too preachy at times. Now, normally, uh, you know, talking about racism is bad. That's the underline of it, you know, and Blue Marvel uh, coming to grips with he could have been a better hero despite everything that happened to him. And there are some really, it really delves into a really cool dichotomy of, you know, a black superhero with that much power in that time period and it really has some good moments, but there's also the story of his uh, friend who became his villain, Anti-Man, who, again, dumb name, but it actually kind of works, because we, in the 60s, it was, it's the 60s, so I was kind of like, it's set, those flashbacks are set in the 60s, so I was like, oh, okay, I can roll with that. But no, with, um, with that said, it does get a little too preachy at times, especially from the wrong characters. Uh, especially Tony Stark, because um, in case you you guys don't know, this is set during um, the time that Civil War had ended, and Tony Stark has the Mighty Avengers. And Tony Stark at times says like, "Oh, this, you know, I would never put you know a superhero in this kind of position." Really, Tony? Really? We're gonna go with that? Okay. But yeah. Um, the character of Adam Brasher, who I, th I think that's how you pronounce his last name, the character who is Blue Marvel, is a very likable guy. He's a guy who has all this great power, and, the, and he was just trying to protect his country, and the world just stabbed him in the back. I mean, hard. Like, he had to, you know, do all this, you know, all this stuff. He did all this great, all these great things, and he was only a superhero for about a year and a half. That was his stint in, until he had to give up after the world found out he was black. Also, you can thank Senator Kelly, a young Senator Kelly, for, you know, say, you know, give it, making him give up. So, we now know that Kelly was a full-on racist. You know, he just needed something to hate other than when mutants came along. Oh, I could be racist towards mutants. It's fine. So, yeah. It is very cool to see... Um, Blue Marvel encounter all these other characters, um, because unlike the Sentry, who was like, he's been part of the, he wasn't around long enough for people to know him and this Marvel time period, and I know what you're thinking, well, the Marvel superheroes started popping up in the 60s, so shouldn't they have met the Blue Marvel? Eh, continuity in the Marvel Universe. I mean, it's not as bad as what DC is now, but it does get kind of ske uh, sketchy, like, it, it keeps to a certain time period, and it kind of updates now and again. So, they do reference that in the 40s they had the Invaders, in the 50s they had the first Marvel Boy, in the 60s it was Blue Marvel. And even Blue Marvel wasn't that around really long. Again, it kind of just scra makes me scratch my head, because a lot of the superheroes in the Marvel Universe have started to appear in the 60s, so it's just kind of weird like that. But it's not as bad as like something like the Sentry, who by the way makes an appearance in here, and get, it's so fun to watch the Sentry get his ass kicked. Repeatedly. It's wonderful. Like, uh, Blue Sentry punches him into orbit and knocks him cold, stuff like that. It's awesome. Fight sequences are pretty cool in here, too. Um, the thing is, is that there's a lot of dialogue you have to read through the comic. And the, th the thing is, is that they try to put too much... Kevin try Kevin Greverix tries... And I hope I'm saying that last name right. But this guy, in just five issues, tries to tell you the whole story of this character that he created in this universe. He's trying so hard in five issues. And I feel like... 
he tried to put too much in in too little of a time. You know what I'm saying? I think he, that's what the what the thing that that uh, kind of bothers me is that this is only a five issue mini, and uh, there's so much more that I want to know. What, you know, we could have expanded more on with Blue Marvel, and it kind of felt like the threat of you know anti man, you know his enemy anti man, uh, just kind of felt swept under the rug at the last second. That's how I felt about it. Is that it more explained his origins and how he got a shit deal rather than him uh, dealing with it all, you know, dealing with his enemy. And I know, yeah, we're learning more about this guy, but I feel like this should have been like a maxi series more than a mini series. I think twelve issues would have served this comic uh, a lot more, a better, a lot more. So that was my thing: is that I felt like he was trying to put too much in just five issues, and yeah. Um, it's a lot. It's very dialogue heavy. I will say that, but it is good dialogue. It's really good dialogue. Like when the Blue Marvel's talking to Namor, who's not a dick. Um, he, when he's talking to Awatu the Watcher, and when he's talking to you know uh, other char- you know the other characters, and yeah, it, it, it's a really good comic. Don't get me wrong. Despite the, the, the you know the problems that I have, the minor problems that I have with it, they're just minor. But Legend of the Blue Marvel is a really good comic. I actually really enjoyed it. It was uh, a lot It was a lot of fun. Kevin Greverix did a really good job with this. Again, the only real big problem that I have with it is that um, not so much... I, w- I actually take back what I said earlier about being a little too preachy. Um, it just kind of insists on itself. Like, um, But then they kind of rectify it with... Um, with uh, you know, some, Rather than just saying outright, oh, racism is bad, they kind of make... Um, Adam goes on to say, you know, some other things in here, and they will make sense, because I know I'm not making a lot of sense as I'm doing this video, but the thing is with this comic, they do bring up some other stuff in here, especially with, like, um, you know, the difference between the Fantastic Four and the Avengers and the X-Men, and what makes the X-Men so different, just because they're born with powers and stuff like that. There's a really good conversation between Tony Stark, uh, Hank Pym, and uh, Reed Richards, with all three of them. There's a really good conversation in between them all. And, you know, Blue Marvel's look on everything. And also his conversations with the other, you know, less, you know, with the other Marvel characters that he encounters. And again, it's always fun to watch Sentry be- get the shit beat out of him. So, yeah. I actually want to read more about Blue Marvel. But again, the only thing, like, the real big thing is too much and too little. But I do recommend this comic if you're interested in reading something with a totally new Marvel character or. You know, you want to read uh, this Marvel character now that he's in uh, Mighty Avengers. He's now a you know a big character in, in the new Mighty Avengers comic that came out of Infinity. So if you're looking for like his origin story, yeah, Ad- Adam Legend of the Blue Marvel is uh, where I'd suggest starting because <laughs> no duh, it's his origin, <laughs> obviously. But anyway, guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'm out.